Hi, welcome back to the Language of Data Toolkit. Let's get started on video three, where we will be discussing standard deviations. In the previous video, we talked about the measures of central tendency, but now we're going to talk about symbols used to describe the spread of data. Standard deviation is how spread out observed values are from the mean. So we are trying to find out if the data is concentrated around the mean or spread out. Let's do a quick example to show standard deviation. Set 1 data is shown below. As you see, the mean is 100, and the standard deviation is 0. On the other hand, set 2 data, which is shown below, has a mean of 100. But the standard deviation would be 10, because each of the four points are on average 10 points away from the mean. Just like with sample size and mean, different symbols are used to differentiate between population and sample. The same goes for standard deviation. The way standard deviation is denoted is up to the researcher in the publishing journal. Below are the symbols used to denote standard deviation. There are different formulas for population standard deviation and sample standard deviation. It is very important to know whether or not you are working with the population or the sample. Let's go through the symbols and the formulas. As you can see, the sigma represents the population standard deviation, and the lowercase s is for the sample standard deviation. Sigma is the sum of all numbers. X is the individual data value. A capital N represents the population size. A lowercase n represents the sample size. Mu is the mean of the population, and X bar is the mean of the sample. In the population formula, you would use the capital N and mu because we are dealing with the population. In the sample formula, you are using lowercase n and x bar because we are dealing with the sample. So now let's figure out why standard deviation is so important in research. There are 10 individuals who were asked to rate two movies on a scale of 1 to 5. Scores are shown below. When we look at the data, we see that the mean for both of the groups are 3. So at this point, many people would think that both movies are equally liked by the 10 individuals. But when we look at the standard deviation, we see that movie 2 had more variability in its scores. Movie 1 had a standard deviation of 0 because none of the ratings deviated from the mean. Movie 2 has a standard deviation of 1.49, which shows that the responses are more varied and are on average 1.49 away from the mean. In this video, we talked about standard deviation and its symbols. By understanding standard deviation, we can get an accurate description of our data. Thanks for listening. See you next time.